Okay, so, um, we have a kind of old friend coming, poking its head back up. Um, again, in physics, we try to model things simply and then refine them with perturbations as we get better data and better understanding of how things should react or act together. Classical versus quantum, um, or even relativistic, all of those things come together. Um, here, though, what we need to do is uh, if we, if you take a look at the model in example 4.1 at face value, what natural frequency do you get? Put in the actual numbers, where in the electromagnetic spectrum does this lie? Assuming the radius of the atom is 0 0.5 angstroms, find the coefficients for refraction and dispersion and compare them with the measured value of hydrogen at 0 degrees Celsius. And atmospheric pressure, A equals 1.3 times 10 to the negative 4. B is equal to 7.7 .7 times 10 to the negative 15 meters squared. Okay, we got quite a bit here. Um, so let's recall first that the example 4.1 was a primitive model of the atom that consisted of a point nucleus plus Q surrounded by a uniformly charged spherical cloud, negative Q, of radius A. So... If we want to consider this to be a model, force was equal to uh, Q uh, E, and here we have uh, the negative Q, so we get negative Q times E, the field of the center, um, and so that's 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q D uh, over A cubed. Um, again, that kind of just comes from like the vector notation, so to speak. Uh, and here uh, we see that we just get negative uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q squared over a cubed. And we'll call that the uh, k spring or the k constant times x. And we'll just go ahead and put uh, x for d some distance away. Um, now with that, what we have here is, or some x vector, whatever. And we see that if we're setting this equal to the spring, that that's equal to negative m omega naught squared x. Okay. So, if we're setting this equal to a spring, let's go ahead and cancel out the negatives and the uh, x's. And we see that omega, the natural frequency, so to speak, is equal to the square root of q squared over 4 pi epsilon naught ma, ma cubed. Um, given that the linear frequency is equal to omega over 2 pi, and we see what uh, omega is, we get 1 over 2 pi times the square root, plug in the charge of an electron, uh, Chug in epsilon naught, the mass of an electron, and the radius. And uh, what we see here is it gives us 7.16 times 10 to the 15 hertz. And this is in the ultraviolet region. The coefficient of refraction A and dispersion B are given by N equal 1 plus A times 1 plus B over uh, lambda squared, which I believe was the Cauchy formula or the Euler formula, one of the two. I'll have to go back in my notes. Here, though, we see that lambda is equal to 2 pi c over omega. And if we push in what these things were, um, given as a and b and all that other stuff, we can factor things out, and we see that um, a is equal to n squared, for the fact that we have one degree of freedom here, all those things that we need, uh, we see that we get several factors of the same, f of 1 and then omega naught, everything for 0 is taking place. Um, but nonetheless, let's go ahead and see what else is there. What we see here is that we have a is equal to n uh, q squared over 2m epsilon naught f over uh, omega naught squared. Uh, b was equal to b over lambda squared, but lambda is equal to um, the omega, uh, 2 pi c over omega, so we have to finagle with that. Um, with that, we see that b over lambda is equal to uh, omega squared, or that should be uh, b over lambda squared, rather, is equal to omega squared, 1 over omega naught squared. Push that through, we see that we get um, the square, lambda squared on the other side, and we see that by squaring it, we cancel out the omegas, and we're left with 2 pi c over omega naught all squared, 
good to go. Here, N is the number of molecules per volume, so we take Avogadro's number, divided by the liters, uh, or the volume that we have, and we get this number. F is the number of electrons per molecule, so that's two for H2. And so here we see that A is equal to this, B is equal to that, and respectively, they're about one-third and one-fourth of the actual values measured as given in the statement. So, uh, you know, we're in, we're in the ballpark, but could definitely be a better model.